Well, uh, that's an interesting concept that wasn't about, I mean, I didn't write it with the suggestion that you may be avoiding invitations. It's how the words are used and that they have on each of us or other people when we use them. and that understanding. Now, if I say, I, I could say attempt the pizza, but it doesn't make much sense, you know, or I could say attempt to eat it, but then that makes it sound like you can't eat it. If I say try to try the pizza, most people if they're native English speakers will understand it. Like I'm offering you a sample, your choice to not participate in trying it or not, but inside that invitation, it doesn't, I'm, I'm probably offering it to you because I think you're going to like it. I'm saying, try the pizza, uh, you know? Um, but what happens for a lot of people is, is that a lot of people come out and they hear that the word try implies failure because it does in, in some cases, as I point out, I do open the door it doesn't mean she failed or that she did did uh, succeed. It's just she, she tried. That's all we know. In other words, you might have an image of somebody, you know, pulling on the door. Now, the door could open or the door could not open. That's at, unknown at that point. But it typically will infer if you tried something, it might not have worked. She tried it and, and gave up. She tried it and found a different way to do it. But they use this thing like try and pick up the pencil to... To, to say, well, see, you can't try, you can only do. That's a slightly different way of using the word try. You know, you're saying try to pick it up and find that you fail because you try, you can't try. So just get rid of the word try, or as I would say, try to eliminate it from your vocabulary. It becomes silly at some point or never say never. The idea is, is to find the way to use these words, any words uh, to great success. Some people say never ask and why. And of course, what happens with that? Somebody say, well, why not? You know, it, it, you know, or never use the word but because it erases everything. Like if I say, um, I love you, but you need a haircut. It, it has kind of a, a little bit of a sting to it. It, does, it doesn't sound like you really love me. I might accept that you do, but there's a condition or there's something else that follows. But if you learn how to use those words effectively, you become more influential and more positively powerful. And you actually help other people to understand the words and to use them better themselves. So what you're doing is you're becoming a better communicator, better, more influential or more persuasive by using words with precision, as opposed to not using them just because somebody tells you not to use them. And this has been a great difficulty in, in the in the land of NLP and training. You know, I hear people recreate the mistakes of the trainers who they went to or the misquote. Somebody say, oh, so-and-so said that, but they didn't. And and if I know that that trainer is misquoting somebody and then I hear students misquoting it, I know pretty much I can guess that they might have somehow either listened to this person or been in their program. And all that's being passed along in that instance is is either misinformation or something that doesn't work as well as something else so it's learning how to to understand things accurately as best as possible this is why napoleon hill said the attempt to get accurate information is, is an, an incredible attempt because it's so in some ways difficult to do especially now in our society with artificial intelligence and with disinformation and with bots and with spies and with media and with social media and with, you know, I mean, uh, it gets really, really hard to get, you know, to the, let's say truth of the matter or the truth is most people would agree that it is. So I use the word try in this article, you know, to point out that there's nothing wrong with the word try. What it is, is that it's how you use it determines um, how you lead another person's thinking. And what typically happens for people is they will say, well, I tried it. And then what? They don't say, well, then I tried it again and I tried it again and then finally I succeeded. Usually they say, I tried it and consequently I gave up. Or I tried it and I found it too hard. So, you know, we're kind of anchored to <sighs> you know, ways of being based on, on how we speak, because how we speak is a slice, it's a piece, it's a representation of everything that's going on. And it's that part that we're most conscious of. 
So if I say try the pizza, I'm I'm actually probably wanting to help you out. You know, tr- try this, and, and you might discover that you like it. Well, I don't want to try it. Well, I'm not here to. I'm just making that as an invitation. If I say try to pick up the pencil and and find that you can't, because you can only do it, then I can say, well, okay, go ahead and try and worry about it and find that you can't worry about it. You know, the more you try to worry, the 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 more you decide to give it up. You know, because if trying implies failing, it means that you're going to fail at your worry. So go ahead, get the worry out of you, release it, let it go. But it's remember, words are only ways of describing things, or describing experiences. You know, it's it's and the experience is always beyond the words. That's why it's very difficult to describe a taste. You know, what what is the taste like? Or or the saying you can't you know describe a color to somebody who's never seen colors. So it's it's just finding out how how words affect another person, and the way you tell that is by looking at them, observing them, and noticing: does it appear to go in? Do they seem like yes, they're getting it? Do they seem like they're not? And to do that with as little judgment on your part as possible, it's what we call clean, open sensory channels, which means you have to be able to look at somebody and not make judgments or assessments based on your biases or your perceptions or your limitations or whatever's going on in you, but actually try and assess it. That's the difference between a human lie detector and a polygraph machine. Essentially, a polygraph machine measures, you know, uh, the galvanic skin response or moisture, it measures pulse rate, it measures breath. It's an, it's a machine. And so it's just designed to to measure those parameters without any kind of judgment. Now, you bring in the polygraph examiner and they have to make a, a, a educated judgment based on what they see on the on the graph paper on the chart that the polygraph is now you know printed out. So the machine, while it could be wrong or it could be miscalibrated, if it's calibrated correctly, should operate correctly and be able to do an accurate measure of those indicators in a human person. But you can have a really good polygraph examiner or a really bad polygraph examiner, and they will determine then how they read the output from the machine. So you want to be, as the polygraph examiner, as clean and open and available to what the machine is telling you or what another person, another human is telling you, and not put your bias on that. And we do that with words all the time. How you understand a word, I understand it. We all assume that we understand what the word love means, but it really means different things to each person who uses the word love in whatever language they use it, because it's about their personal experiences in life and the conclusions that they come to and the feelings that they have about it. And so, you know, it's, it's, it benefits us to learn about the power of words and not only the power of words, the power of word choice and how to direct people's attention towards their positive resources, opportunities and possibilities that they can um, embrace so that they can move forward. So, I hope that kind of clarifies what this was about. You know, I've done like I did on the word and and but, and I'll just mention it briefly here. You know, if you say I love you, but, you know, what happens for a lot of people is they'll say things like, um, I'd like to do that, but I can't, or I'd like to do it, but it costs too much money, or I'd like to, I'd like to go with you, but I'm busy. If what happens then is the last thing that's left in their mind is the issue of why they can't do it because it costs too much, because I, I'm busy or, or whatever. If you stop it and reverse it and you say, oh, so you're busy, but you'd really like to go, or it costs too much, but you'd really like to do it. How you say it is just as important because if I go, oh, it costs too much, but you really like to do it. That's, you know, so how I, how I speak, but I say, oh, it costs too much, but you'd really like to do it. So why don't we look at some ways that we can make that happen or and you'd really like to do it and think about how much fun you'd have. In other words, you're attaching ideas or thoughts or images or feelings to what you're saying. So you're you're walking with somebody down a path as opposed to trying to push them. Or if they're a friend of yours or a client or a customer and they're stuck or limited in some way, and you have a, 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 some form of agreement where, look, I, I'd really like to help you with this. May I help you with this? whether that's spoken or otherwise, and you go, oh, so you couldn't do that. But 
you really want to. The last thing left in their mind is that they want you. Okay, now let's figure out how we can make that happen. You're assisting them in moving from a stuck state or a limitation. I tried it. You know, I try and try and try and nothing. Same kind of thing. All right. So I need to move on. And oh, I see the Rick Sykes TV. Um, this is exciting news. The, the website is coming along. It's still in construction. There's still things being added. Uh, it works. Facebook took it and removed every single post that was made about it on Facebook going, oh, this is wrong. And I don't know if it's the dot TV or whatever it is, but Facebook removed everything. LinkedIn does it. Nobody else does. But of course, Facebook would. So that happened today. Um, you know, the show is coming up at 3 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern, and like 9 p.m. in England or London time or whatever, that kind of stuff. Um, come and watch the show. Go to the website. Sign up for the new newsletter because we're, we're, we're making some changes and some shifts and all things are, are happening. And it's happening, you know, as swiftly and as, 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 as much as it can. Um, but uh, there's lots of good stuff. And with the show... You know, it's going to each week there's going to be discussion. Sometimes I'll have um, celebrity authors or speakers or actors or filmmakers or musicians or creative people of some kind. Other times we'll be talking about, you know, important topics. We've we've talked about marketing somewhat and and using the Internet. We've talked about mindset. We're going to continue some of those things. And, um, you know, and I'm in the in the process of, of inviting and booking guests for the show. And I've got some really uh, if, if they all come through. If, fantastic and if, if they don't all come through fantastic but if they all do come through fantastic too so i'm excited about that and i'm excited about the direction that this is moving so go take a look at it um the interesting thing is is at the current moment if you if you if you don't put https dot slash slash it comes up saying verify that you're not a robot for some reason i don't know what that's about um but if you put the whole you know https colon slash slash www.rexsykes.tv, then it should bypass that. So I, I don't know. Maybe that's what happened with Facebook. So you see it right there. It says www.rexsykes.tv. Um, and I don't know. I'm going to click on it and see what happens. Go to link. So yeah, it told me that verification process and that I was verified. And then it took me to say, I don't know why it's doing that. It might be because it's new or something going on with the, you know, the powers that be. But anyway, it's all good. And we invite you to join it and to share it and to leave comments, to ask questions and let us know what you, your thoughts are and give us some feedback. Because my goal is always to be able to serve you better here and elsewhere, whether online or in a, a live event or in programs, but it's to deliver for you the, the best that I'm able to deliver. And I've been doing it for 50 years. So I hope that uh, that you'll help me help you whenever you can. And uh, meanwhile, have a fabulous and beautiful day. I want to thank Paul and and uh, all the co-hosts and uh, moderators here and Nula and Juliana and Dee and Deanna. And I see the other Dina and Mo and the other people who've been here coming and going. Thank you. And thank you for managing the room and taking care of people. I love you. And I have got to run. So have a beautiful rest of the day. And I hope I see you later. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Rex. I'm sorry. I'm going to jump back in just for a second. I, I just realized we also had AI symposium this evening. That link is on Facebook and on LinkedIn and, and elsewhere. Uh, you know, it might be in a newsletter or something that I've sent out, but that's, uh, you know, it's AI meets mental health. And what it's about is, you know, is AI helping or harming us? And there's probably a little bit of both. But but the this is our third meeting. We get people who have uh, kind of a stake in it. You know, some of the top people in, in who are thinkers on this topic and contributors, whether pro or not so pro. And, uh, and we have a discussion. So if you're interested in what the future means to all of us uh, as humans intersecting in our affecting or interacting with this uh, technology, um, join our symposium. It's, it's going to be this evening. Uh, I think it's 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time is when it starts. And um, that's about it. So um, I'm out. <laughs> All the best. And thanks, Paul.